Start the clock. Okay, good evening everyone. Uh, Dr. Freedom here. And, oh, it's another slow news day apparently. Uh, yeah, not much going on. There was rumors of filming going on. It's really weird out of the way location. But nobody has anything definite for what's going on. Now, apparently we found out that they slipped a while. They had a second unit go out the feet of Ventura last week. And um, apparently it was just second unit stuff that was being filmed there. Probably maybe some pickup shots or some scenery shots for you know, one of those episodes. We'll find out in the future. All right. Uh, let's take a look at what we got here. Not a whole lot going on. But some very interesting topics, though, indeed. Oh, I'm sorry. oh, that's right. Don't forget, Omega Files this weekend will be Game of Thrones. We had a really fun time doing the Avengers one. I like going off and doing different subjects every now and then. I know a lot of the folks that watch this channel aren't really interested in non-Doctor Who topics. But you know what? You know, give it a watch anyway. It was a really fun one to do. Plus, a lot of the guys that are on there are really good with comic books. I'm not a comic book guy. So I like sitting back and listening and maybe learning some new stuff about what's going on in comics. You know, how they follow storylines and whatnot. So. Maybe go go check it out. Also, we did wander all over the place on that one a bit, topic wise. So it's kind of a little bit of a roller coaster ride watching that one. But okay, here we go. This has been a very very controversial subject this year. Doctor Who female lead was considered in 1986, and now this is something I hadn't even heard of before. Okay, fun fact for Whovians: Doctor creator Sidney Newman considered gender swapping his iconic Time Lord way back in the 1980s. Now, every time Doctor reaches another generation, the discussion of potentially swapping the Time Lord's gender comes to the forefront. And as we learned today, this debate has been going on longer than we actually knew. In fact, Doctor creator Sidney Newman considered the idea in October of 1986. Now, he mentioned the possibility of a gender change in a letter to the BBC One controller of the time, Michael Gray. Yeah, there's a popular figure in Doctor Who history. Okay, Newman wrote... That, quote-unquote, at a later stage, Doctor Who could be metamorphosed into a woman. This, and he goes, and the, but he did add, this requires some considerable thought, mainly because I want to avoid a flashy Hollywood Wonder Woman, because this kind of heroine has no flaws, and a character with no flaws is a poor, end quote. Now, this discussion took place during the Colin Baker era, which Newman described as, quote-unquote, you know, Sorry about that. I had to take a drink. Largely socially valueless escapist schlock. End quote. Now, of course, though, we know that Mr. Newman, who created the show with Verity Lambert in 1963, did not implement the idea during his tenure. Now, only time will tell whether, you know, Stephen Moffat, now the receiver of the OBE, or whoever follows him might eventually take on the, you know, cha taking on the chance of changing the doctor's gender. Okay, now if they did it, a lot of fans would switch off. I, I, I'm not kidding. And I'm not just being a meanie or anything like that. I'm not sure if they'd be ready for the shock of such a, a major change. Me, personally, I wouldn't mind it. If it's the right actress and she can carry on the role and she can carry on the person, the persona of the doctor, I, you know, it's like, I wouldn't mind. But there's a lot of the hardcore fans out there, you know, you know, even in New Who, I don't think would be able to take it. But only time would tell. Me, I would not stop watching the show or anything like that because I don't see it. I see it as sexist if, you know, come on. If we can have a female master, what's the problem with having a female doctor already? Which leads into the next article over on Coldbox, five plausible candidates for a female in Doctor Who. And the names that come up are Ruth Wilson, Tamsin Gregg, Laura Palver, Saran Jones, and Vicki McClure. Hmm, I loved her as a drift. Okay. Mm. Irene Adler. All right, uh, let's get back to that. <laughs> so that was just some you know names they threw out. Don't worry about it. I don't think it's going to happen anytime soon. Oops, sorry about that. <laughs> I didn't mean to click on that. Now, this one happened over the weekend, and I, I did I forgot to include it in my last news report. Uh, Benny Summerfield makes live action debut in the new Big Finish trailer. Now, Big Finish production released a special video teaser for the upcoming box set, The New Adventures of Bernie Summerfield. Volume 2, The Triumph of Sutek. Now, this breaks new ground for the long-running character of uh, Benny Summerfield. Now, Bernice Summerfield had originally started on audio way back when. I'm not kidding. Her original series of adventures started, like, in 98, and this day, that ran 16 series. 16 series. 
I've listened to every single one of them. That's one of the benefits when you were working 58 hour weeks around that time, especially on 10 hour nights. It was nice to, you know, run off with Benny for, you know, 10 hours at a time, you know, because it depends on who wrote which adventure. Benny can, you know, can be very serious, but there's also times when Benny was an absolute lush. You know, very, very funny character. I can all say, all right, blah, blah. Yeah, I, I, I get a kick out of Benny Summerfield, who I sometimes think that they borrowed the idea of River Song from. Okay, now the teaser's titled Transmission from Mars and features the voice actress Lisa Bowerman, who would normally play her, you know, on the audio dramas, popping in for this you know, pretty thing. Now, the thing is, um, this does center around uh, her um, adventures with the Seventh Doctor and you know, all these particular ones. And it's just weird to me because it even opens up with the Sylvester McCoy theme. But it's um, so far, I've, I've got about halfway through the Triumph of Sutek and, and all that. It's, it's a very interesting story, uh, especially with the fact they brought back Gabriel Wolf to, you know, to reprise the role of Sutek because he originally played him all the way back in Pyramids of Mars with uh, Tom Baker and, you know, Sarah Jane Smith played by Liz Sladen. And he still has it. A lot of people don't realize, you know, out there that Gabriel Wolf also did the voice of the quote-unquote uh, horned whatever creature that appeared in the Impossible Planet in the Satan Pit. So, interesting, you know, bit there. This guy still has a very menacing voice, and from what I've heard so far, he still can capture Sutek rather well. Uh, okay, so be sure to go check this out. It's a nice, nifty little trailer. It's only about a minute and a half long, but it, it's definitely worth it. It's a kick. It's a hoot. Okay, we got a little bit more details on the uh, uh, Titan Doctor Who San Diego Comic-Con exclusives uh, included with us now. They've got some... Um, oh, yeah, sorry, uh, the, sorry, I lost my word there for a minute. Uh, we've got some synopsises included now, or synopses, and they have a little description of each. And, you know, this is mainly just an update article on something we already covered pretty much. There's the new update covers. You want to take a look at them, you click on them like that, and they come up the full size. Well, normally they would. So there we go. And wham, there you go. Um, be sure you also, these look very nice right here. Very well done. I like these renditions here. But these are San Diego Comic-Con exclusive covers. Uh, if, you are, if you're interested in this kind of, kind of thing, boom, here it is. Okay. Catch Doctor Who stars a new sci-fi drama called Humans. Um, there's a lot of doc uh, people who've appeared on Doctor Who or are appearing apparently in this series. Um, that's mainly what they're telling you. Um, matter of fact, uh, right here, joining, joining this main character is Tom Goodman Hill, whose credits include Spy, The Imitation Game, The Office, as well as playing Reverend Golightly in 2008's The Unicorn and the Wasp, Danny Webb from The Impossible Planet Satan Pit, Colin Morgan, for, a.k.a. Jethro from Midnight, and he's also better known as Merlin. And Ruth Bradley, who played Molly O'Sullivan in the uh, Dark Eyes series of the Eighth Doctor Adventures. Uh, Manpri Bashu, or is that Bachu? Is that Baku? All right. Um, he was uh, the one who told everyone not to you know, click on the Wi Fi symbol in Bells of St. John. And of course, Rebecca Front, who's going to be appearing in Series 9 with Peter Capaldi. So. That's mainly what it's telling you. Also, they got a little trailer here if you want to go check it out for this particular series. All righty. Next up, we have McCoy, um, Malloy, and Levine. Um, see, well, basically, this is footage that was taken from the um, Kapow Sci-Fi Market. Um, it's, it's a nice short little video. It's mainly just a compilation. Uh, but if you're a fan of, you know, Sylvester McCoy, Seven Doctor, you know, Terry Malloy, who played Davros, and, of course, John Levine, who was uh, Sergeant Menton. It's got some nifty little bits with them in here. Um, very, very interesting stuff. Okay, it says right here, the Kapow Sci-Fi Market and Family Fun Day was held on High Street in Wellington Square in Stockton Theater on Saturday the 6th, and their, their editor was there with his son. Um, but if you want to go check this out, this place, I think they got some more info on where it's located and whatnot, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Wait a minute, or was this a one-time thing? I thought they were referring to an actual market. But okay, but interesting stuff there. Watch the video, it's cute. And lastly, just for crafts and giggles, Doctor Who video, How to Get Clara's Love, Jenna Coleman and the show's costume designer, Ray Holman, discuss Clara's costumes and the secret to her look in this new video. It's only a minute and 17 seconds, so it's not like they're going to give you a die-hard rundown. But also, a lot of her stuff, if you look around, 
has been popping up as available on a lot of different cosplay sites amongst Facebook and whatnot. So if you're interested in this kind of thing, boom, here it is. Okay, so like I said, not a whole lot to report. I'm um, going back to 480p because I, I love doing the news reports in 720. I'm going to keep doing the Omega files in 720, but it's just it's very time consuming. And I know it come, makes the text come out better, but one of the primary things I want you to do is go read these articles for your, for yourself. That's why I include a link down below in the description box so if you want to read along with me or if you want to go check it out for yourself, it's always there if you want to go look at it. Um, once again, this, this week's Omega Files is going to be Game of Thrones. And we've already decided, and well, I've pretty much already decided, that the following weekend is going to be Guardians of the Galaxy. So please tune in for those. Uh, Guardians of the Galaxy one should be interesting. I really enjoyed that film, and I'm really looking forward to sitting out everybody and having a talk about it. Um, oh, well, there you go. So until next time, everybody, have a good one. Dr. Freedom out. Say love you. Bye-bye.